In a powerful moment earlier this week, Josh Cavallo, the 21-year-old midfielder from Australian club Adelaide United, posted an emotional video message publicly coming out as gay. The statement was heroic as it was honest, and it also confirmed Cavallo as the only known-out gay male professional footballer in any top-flight league, with only a few others before him who have previously publicly come out during their careers. But this message was also a call to celebrate inclusion and a need to do more for the LGBTQ plus community in the game. And I'm pleased to say that George joins me on Keo Lasso as we discuss the week he has had since the announcement, the responses he has received and what he hopes the message can do moving forward. Keo Lasso begins right now. Josh, my friend, how are you? Welcome to Keo Lasso. How have you been these last few days? I've been very overwhelmed and excited. And look, it's an exciting time for myself and also for the world on a global scale. Yeah, absolutely right. You shook the world, my friend. Uh, listen, what have the, what has the last few days been like since you made the announcement specifically uh, with, uh, you know, not just your teammates and stuff, but your friends and everybody around you opening your social media? How's that been? <laughs> That's crazy. It's been... It's been a, a, an, an unforgettable experience. It's something that, you know, I remember for the rest of my life, that the support that everyone around me has shown me, not only my close friends, but strangers all around the world. And, and, and they've wrapped their arms around me and everything that I read online, it's been really positive and it, it makes me really happy on the inside. It just makes me think, why have I been living my life for so long hidden from everyone? No, it's, a, it's just a heroic statement. So great to to see the positivity and the overwhelming response. Listen, you got a lot of people quote tweeting you: Gerard Piquet, Slatan Ibrahimovic, Griezmann, uh, Marcus Rashford. Anybody in particular that you said to yourself, "Oh my God, this person uh, is sending me messages." Yes, last night I got a message from John Terry, and it was a very emotional time for me, and I'm. It made me very happy on the inside just to see that straight people, straight icons around the world in football, in the footballing game, support me and they're backing me. So I think this is important for everyone to see. And, it, and it's such an encouraged thing to do that it shouldn't be such a big deal in the future. Absolutely right. Um, I know you mentioned it in the video, but what has the reaction been like amongst your teammates? Yeah, look, the reaction was phenomenal. You know, when I first came out to my coaches five, six weeks ago, I told them privately, my coaches, Carl and Ross, and um, they, they were very nice about it. And they said to me, Josh, we still love you for who you are. And, and you're still the same kid. And, and, and as long as you're performing better on the pitch, we don't care. So it was good. Um, <laughs> and yeah, when I told my teammates, they, they were the same thing. They gave me the biggest hug. And, and they said, I, I, be comfortable in your own skin. And we're very happy for you. And they showed a lot of respect. And that was the main thing. And I, and I can't wait to get back on that pitch and, and, and play because I don't know what it's like to play with a free of mind space. Absolutely. And you mentioned, you know, you, you said before, you, you don't know how, why you waited for so long or like, I can't believe that, that I did this and the response has been amazing. What prompted you to make the announcement in this moment? Uh, how long were you weighing up the decision? Yeah, look, it's something that I, I started thinking about when I was about 16 years of age. So it's about six mm. years ago. Look, when I was growing up, I, I dreamed to be a footballer. And once I got to that stage of being a professional footballer, there was, there was no one that I could look up to that was a gay footballer and walked in my footsteps. So I want to be a, a role model to the future generation or to someone around the world or, or listening and watching this video or who have seen my video that, that it's, it's okay to be gay and play football. It, it, look, in a normal world, being gay is perfectly fine. So let's make it normal in football. Absolutely right. I mean, uh, one thing that I really wanted to ask you was, obviously, it's amazing, such an amazing statement, and, and you did such a heroic thing. But it's 2021, and you are sadly the only openly gay active male soccer player in a top flight league. What would you like to see the, from the game, from the institution, from fans, from a player standpoint? Do, do you feel like uh, you know, something more needs to happen in order to make sure that other gay players feel accepted. And this becomes not just like an amazing moment, but the norm. Yeah, look, I think it's already been done. Look, at, look around the world and look at the reception I got. It was phenomenal. If someone was uh, in my footsteps and to see that, I think it would make him very welcomed and, and, and give him a sense of relief that it's okay to be yourself. You know, uh, 
I, I'm sad. It saddens me to think that, you know, there could be the next Messi or Suarez on our hands. And, and if he's gay, he turns around, he turns away from the game because he's scared he doesn't fit in. So it, it, it's definitely affecting talent too. So I think if um, they're seeing the positive reactions and who's getting around me, I, I, and this has just been a phenomenal experience for myself. And it's something that um, I can leave the leave and put my head on the pillow at night and just be happy because I can be my authentic self now. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, unlike the women's game, a major issue in the men's game is the lack of role models. There's only a handful of examples, as you mentioned, of course, in the past of openly gay male, uh, gay male open soccer players. Did that ever deter you from pursuing your dream to become a, a player? Because you mentioned, obviously, you don't want like the next Messi or Suarez to go through something like that and, and feel bad if they're gay. Did, did you feel that when you were when you're trying to be a pro player? Yes, I did. I, I, I did have thoughts of maybe football wasn't right for me. Maybe I, I can't be gay and, and do what I love and play football. Um, and, and that's something that, that made me want to make a stand and, and come out and, and change this because it, it saddens me to think that I thought in that way of process and I, I don't want anyone else to experience that. Yeah. Have you seen attitudes, though, uh, in recent years towards the LGBTQ plus community change within soccer, within football over the past few years? Definitely, definitely. Look at uh, the EPL encouraging uh, the, the armbands and, and stuff like that. that. That's fantastic. But look, uh, on a bigger scale, look, we're just asking to get treated exactly the same, no different to anyone else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so here's the other one uh, for you. you. You're in the middle of preseason. Now as the uh, A-League kicks off next month, how's training going for you? Training's been really good. Like the last five to six weeks, uh, I felt like I already had so much weight off my shoulders. And that was just two people knowing. So um, I can't wait to just get out on the pitch today and start training. We've got, a, we've got a practice game on the weekend too. So I'm really excited to do that and just see how it feels. And I already feel so much lighter. So I can't imagine what it's going to be like. Do you feel just like a, a, a different like kind of person or a different energy? Like, I mean, I'm yeah. talking to you and obviously we just met, Josh, but there, there's something like there's like this light, this energy that's coming. Do you feel that? Is that ever like the response? That's basically what's happening to you right now? Or is it that yeah, you haven't so the, had training the, yet? <laughs> the, the first, exactly. The first, the first night when, when I went to bed and I had about three hours sleep because mm. I was very distracted on my phone. But I woke up the next morning and I, I had the biggest smile on my face. And I, I've never done that in six years before. And it was just something that was coming natural to me. So I, I, it was one of the worst. I, I had the shortest sleeps, but it was one of the best sleeps I've ever had. So <laughs> it was great. <laughs> That's fantastic. Three hours, but they were amazing. Three hours. Right. <laughs> so Adelaide United finished fifth last term. What are the expectations this time around? And what are your own expectations now, Josh? Yeah, definitely. Look, uh, our expectations at Adelaide United are nothing less than winning the championship. Our team is more than capable of doing that. You know, we've made some crucial signings um, over the preseason. So I, I think um, that we've got a good chance that, um, win the premiership this year so um and on a personal level look i i just want to i just want to show the world what i can do what i can bring to the table and, and represent my country australia yeah well that was actually where i was going there do you have like major expectations now of yourself as well do you like are your dreams becoming even bigger now this energy that you have right now are they pushing you to think to push yourself as well on the pitch yeah, definitely. Look, I, I, I have to wait till I get on the pitch and see how I am. But I'm really excited right now. And um, it's just a sense of relief and, and freedom. And, and that's something that I, I've hidden for so many years. So it's going to take a little bit for me to undo and unlearn. But um, um, it's a really exciting time for me. And I can't wait to get started. How You're talking about the home crowd, maybe that first home game. Are you, uh, are you excited about that, expecting that? You know, because the support has been mainly, obviously, from your close ones, your friends, your, your family, your teammates. But now when you see the, the support, like from a stadium perspective, does that excite you? Yeah, definitely. It's, it's very exciting, um, especially in Australia. We, we are having a hard time with COVID. So um, a lot of states are in lockdown and it's going to be good to see crowds in the stadium again and, and get the ball rolling. And um, at the main thing is, is that I'm happy, you know, for myself, this is, this is more than football. This was my personal life. And this is a, a big issue that I was dealing with. And um, I, I think I'm only going to grow from here. So I, I, I'm excited to live every day from here onwards.
Absolutely, Josh. Before we say goodbye, uh, you, you brought something up really important at the very beginning and, and, and you continue to do so, which is about, you know, I think this is obviously it's about you and, and how great it is, but it's also about the message that you're continuing to younger players, young gay kids who like really want to play football, but they feel that sort of uh, fear, I guess, of saying, like you said, like maybe I am not you know, should be playing this game. What message do you have for them? Maybe, you know, younger players who are looking at you, they're seeing your message, they're reading what you're doing, they're so inspired by what you have done. What message would you have for them? Uh, my, me my message would be, be yourself. You know, look, look. I unfortunately had to hide myself for six years and that, that's the only regret I have. And And look, I'm lucky I'm at the age of 21 and I'm only at the start of my career and I've got a lot of years to go down the track and I can make up for that. But look, I, I would hate to have someone live this period and, and have it and live it till they're 40 to come out and, and miss the opportunity of to have a normal happiness throughout life. So it, as I said, this is a topic greater than football. It, it's, it's more about their mental health too and, and just wanting to be happy and fit in. And as a kid, the worst thing you want to be doing is is thinking, oh, am I going to fit in? And you just want to be enjoying yourself, playing whatever sport you love and doing whatever you want to do. Josh Cavallo, you're a very inspiring person. I, I, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for the responses. I wish you all the best with Adelaide United and your future. My best to you, your friends, your family, uh, and, and keep on rocking it. And here's to you in this new season coming up. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, guys. And that was Josh Cavallo. Thank you so much for being part of Kego Lasso. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter, Kego Lasso Pod, youtube.com forward slash Kego Lasso. And we will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>